What is the left? Where does it come from? Well, it started perhaps even before Karl Marx with the French philosopher Rousseau, who said nobody owns anything. Then Karl Marx came along, the French communes gave us the word communism. It evolved in England and throughout the Anglo-Saxon world as Fabian socialism, socialism that's not based on armed revolution, but more on incremental revolution through peaceful means. But the 60s was distilled by the leftist students and professors of that era through two organizations called the Students for Democratic Society and the Weathermen. They're the ones who wrote the Port Huron Statement, and they're the ones who really mastered Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals. And they've led us to the governments we have in most locality states and certainly in the federal bureaucracies to contemporary statism. Now, where did the new left come from? And what, what can we learn about our opponents by studying what came before them? Perhaps the cultural aspect of what they're doing is best understood by studying an Italian communist by the name of Antonio Gramsci. Joseph Stalin didn't like Gramsci because Gramsci said, we really ought to abandon the armed revolutionary struggle and move towards incremental cultural change. He was, did most of his work in Italy and he wanted to undermine Western standards by destroying the cultural norms of the day. He described the culture with the words cultural hegemony, the cultural domination, and he wanted to describe cultural, the culture gradually. This led to a group of Marxists in Germany known as the Frankfurt School, and they called themselves the cultural Marxists. And they, like Gramsci, focused more on culture than on Marxist economics. How do you change the culture? Their view of changing culture and bringing socialism, the tenets of Marx into society, focus on a new definition of revolution. They looked at what they call rhetorical radicalism, changing the language. We see this with the PC movement all the time. How do we use words? How can words be manipulated to change the language and change the way people think and look at the world? They also understood that radicals have to look at the world the way it is in order to bring about gradual incremental change. They have to work within the system, focus on internal infiltration. They started with universities, moved into our education system and into our bureaucracies. By focusing on this sort of infiltration, it didn't require outright frontal assaults on the system. The left, by the time that, uh, that Alinsky had come along, also had become much better at organizing the masses and organizing themselves. They realized that you didn't have to turn everyone into a, a true believing Marxist, that you yourself even could act in a schizophrenic manner. The whole point was simply to polarize people, to divide people into a mentality of thinking of the haves and have-nots, the, the masses versus the bourgeoisie or as we heard in recent times, the 99% versus the 1%. By polarizing people, you don't have to make them all true believers or understanders of the tenets of Marx. You work within their experience. You try and build within them some core of idealism. You activate their curiosity, their irreverence for authority, captivate their imagination, use relativity to relate to them and build their, their emotions and their adherence to your structures. Saul Alinsky seems to have borrowed a lot from Sun Tzu's Art of War because he saw this as a constant struggle. Use whatever you have as a tactical approach. This is a constant battle, struggle, conflict, and it's about force. It's consciously deliberate acts by which human beings live with each other and deal with the world. And you're always at world war because you're always trying to undermine the culture that exists. 
Saul Alinsky compared Rules for Radicals with Machiavelli's The Prince. He said The Prince was written by Machiavelli for the haves on how to hold power. And he said he wrote Rules for Radicals for the have-nots on how to take it away. Thanks so much for watching this video. To watch our latest video, click here. And to make sure you don't miss any future videos, be sure to subscribe.